Hello, and welcome or welcome back to the AGF Design Studio channel. My name's Alana, I'm a freelance lettering artist and designer, and today's video is going to be all about Adobe Photoshop for the iPad version 4.4 update. This video is going to be covering the last few rounds of updates because now they've got a good chunk of things that I'd love for you guys to see. New features that help you with organizing your files, improvements to how you work inside the app, and more. If you're new to Adobe Photoshop for the iPad, I suggest you watch my beginner tutorial video, which I'll link in the description box below. All right, without further ado, let's jump in. So our first update is going to be all about bulk deleting from the files tab. So for example, if you tap this select option, you'll see a bunch of empty checkboxes appear near all your files. You can simply tap them and then hit delete. So the whole idea of this update is that you're able to delete in bulk. So more than one item at a time. So as many files as you select are the ones that you will be able to delete. Once you've selected those items to be deleted, don't worry. If you made a mistake, you can always hop right into your deleted folder and recover them. So don't worry, things aren't permanently deleted yet. You can go to your three dot icon in the bottom right hand corner and select restore. That will bring your item back to your files tab safe and sound. But do note that if you select permanently delete or you select any of these in bulk and then select permanently delete, they will be gone forever. So tread lightly. So in terms of organization for your files, you can bulk delete now, but if you wanna simply just do some file organizing, in that case, it'll be a little bit of dragging and dropping. And we had this update for Fresco where you can do bulk file organization. So hopefully they'll bring that to Photoshop for the iPad as well in future updates. You can also always organize your files in a grid view or a list view if you like. All right, let's check out our next update. So this is Photoshop. And the first thing you think about when you think about Photoshop is probably photos. So this new update is all about how you can more easily bring in photos and text by cutting, copying, and pasting right into Photoshop. So let's take a look. For this, I'm just going to open my Photos app. So I already have this photo, some books that I had arranged on my desk for a video a long time ago. Both the iPad and iPhone have this feature where you can copy parts of your image and paste them. And it'll basically sort of extract them and mask them for you. So all you need to do is tap your image and you'll see copy. So that was a little tap and hold. I'm just gonna hit copy. Then I'm just gonna switch back to Photoshop here. I'm going to tap my layer, hit my three dot icon and I'm just gonna hit paste. Now it's going to ask if you'd like to allow Photoshop to paste from photos. So I'm gonna hit allow paste. So I'm just gonna to need to resize this a bit because I guess that was a really big photo. But now I've got the books from that photo completely extracted and I was able to paste it right into Photoshop. This is pretty cool. It does some of the legwork for you. It removed that table um, background from the image for me, so I didn't have to do it myself. But let's take a look at what those uh, edges look like. I'm just gonna throw some color back here. Uh, it's, it's pretty clean. You know, you lose a little bit of detail, but not much, not very much. So I'd say that was a pretty successful copy and paste. So yeah, I encourage you to use this like crazy. This is really insane actually. So now we're going to do this again, but with text because it's for photos and for text. 
So we're just gonna go back to that photo. And you can do this with any photo. You can just copy a portion of text that appears in the image. And then I'm just going to use my text tool. And I'm just gonna paste. So it was able to recognize the word that I had copied from that image. Now I will say that you might get mixed results for the text um, portion because this was pretty clear. I mean, it is drawn in a stylized form of lettering, but it was still legible enough for the program to be able to recognize what the word was. I do sometimes get that the text might not be clear enough. It might be a low quality photo or the styling of the lettering or the wording might just be too strange for the program to recognize. So do sort of have that in mind that it won't be perfect every single time, but this is really cool. And again, it's just like doing a little bit of that legwork for you and making things that much simpler. So now you can get to photo editing and adding text and all these things that much faster in Photoshop for the iPad. You could always choose to leave your text as a vector that's editable. You could always flatten it so that you can start making kind of crazy adjustments to it and sort of editing it in interesting ways, but that's totally up to you. But there's a lot of options here. Again, if you're not familiar with Adobe Photoshop for the iPad, I highly encourage you to check out my beginner video, which is linked in the description box below. But we are not done yet. Let's check out our next update. For this next update, we are looking at layer targeting. So to demonstrate this, I have separated each of these four books from our original image, and I've put them on separate layers. What this new update allows you to do is take your selection tool. I'm gonna to collapse my layer panel here, but it lets you simply tap whatever that object is and have control over it just by tapping it. And I collapsed the layer panel to show you that because I'm not tapping anything on the layer panel here. I'm simply tapping the image. It's starting to select and identify each layer independently without me having to go over to the layers panel. So this is really nice, this is convenient. You might see this from the desktop version of Photoshop. So just bringing more of those features in for us to use and enjoy and just make using the application on the iPad that much simpler. And remember that whatever you're working on on Photoshop for the iPad, because of cloud documents, will be able to be opened in Photoshop on your desktop. So it's a pretty seamless transition, pretty seamless workflow between mobile and your laptop or desktop setup. So very nice. I really enjoy using it. And as they're slowly rolling out more features, we'll be doing more of these updates. I have a whole playlist of Adobe Photoshop for iPad videos over here. Also, the channel just crossed 5,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for everyone's continued support of the channel. Let me know in a comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you so much. And if you're not subscribed yet, hit that button. I post weekly videos. All right. See you in the next one. Bye.